Welcome back to the OU Insider YouTube channel. This is the Quick Slants season preview series alongside Jesse Critton and I am Parker Thune. And today we come to game number five on the Sooner slate in the fall of 2023. That would be the Iowa State Cyclones, whom the Sooners defeated 27 to 13 up in Ames a year ago. Matt Campbell and ISU have given the Sooners some persistent problems over the last few years, but seemed like Oklahoma finally got over the hump and was able to win one pretty decisively against this program last fall. However, that was due in part, Jesse, to the fact that this was not a very good Iowa State team last year at all. No, uh, that is a very nice way of putting it. Uh, they finished dead last in a Big 12, 4-8 and eight in the conference. Or, or sorry, 4-8 and eight overall, 1-8 and eight in the conference. And, I mean, they, they lost some tough games, and I think that in some ways decided their season. I mean, they lost by 3 to Kansas, lost 14-11 to Kansas, 10-9 to, to Kansas State, 24-21 to, to Texas. So they lost a lot of close games. They were in some games. But at the end of the day, it's the same thing as OU. It's the same thing as OU last season. At some point, close losses are losses. They lost a lot of close games, and as such, they finished last in the Big Twelve. Now, former Iowa State great. It feels weird to call him that, but that's really what he is. Former Iowa State great Brock Purdy went from Mister Irrelevant to the cusp of a Super Bowl appearance last year for the San Francisco 49ers as a rookie. Started the season third on the depth chart there obviously found his way uh, into the starting lineup and became one of the more memorable storylines of that NFL season. What was evident in Ames in the meantime was that Iowa State very much missed Purdy and his replacement, Hunter Deckers, uh, definitely not the same caliber of player that his predecessor was. Yeah, no kidding. And just to throw a couple of numbers at you, last season, Iowa State's defense was really good. They, I mean, they only allowed 20.2 points per game. But on the flip side of the ball, they also only scored 20.2 points per game. It's not every It's not every year you see a team score the, literally the same amount of points as they surrender. But yeah, to your point, this offense, that was the problem for them last season. I mean, to only average 20 points per game. They had so many games they scored last season in conference play under 20 points. This offense never got going without Brock Purdy. And even, at, you know, against OU last season in Ames, I mean, OU won that game 27-13, and you were there just like I was. That was a rough game to watch for Iowa State's offense, and that's what it was like all year. No question about that. It was a very lackluster Saturday afternoon on both sides of the ball for both teams when the Sooners made the trek up there, but ultimately Oklahoma was able to pull away in the end, get that interception from Danny Stutzman down the stretch to close things out. They picked off Hunter Deckers three times in that football game. Now, I am curious to get your read on how much of a blip last season was for Iowa State. Is it a sign of the new normal on the heels of a 2021 season where they were expected to be in the thick of it for a Big 12 title and finish 7-6? and six? So do you sense that there is a progressive downward trend here? Or do you feel like with the culture Matt Campbell has built at ISU and some of the talent that he's been able to accumulate that especially in light of some of those close losses, it's really not as bad as it might look right now? No, and I mean, if there's a positive you want to take from last season, again, it is the, it is defensively. I mean, they were one of the best defenses in the country. They were in a lot of games. It's just that lack of offensive firepower uh, that, that really made the difference. If you're looking ahead to next season, I think it's tough to gauge how much to expect this offense to be better. They are returning a lot of the same guys from last season, which is a good or bad thing, depending on the way you look at it. But they're also losing Xavier Hutchinson, who had 107 catches last season. He was, in a lot of games, really their only reliable source of offense. Um, I mean, they are returning a couple – I mean, they're returning Jalen Noel. Uh, Hunter Deckers is coming back, assuming he is their starting quarterback next season, maybe another year under his belt. Uh, but they really didn't add that much through the – they've only added a couple of players through the transfer portal. Their recruiting class was fine. I think most – it's I think Rivals has it ranked in the 40s. Um, so I think it's – I, all that's to say, I think it is interesting to see that, you know, in 2020, they were a really good team that made the Big 12 title. 2021, they had an okay season. Last season was just really bad, especially offensively. I think it's hard to say how much better they're going to be, but I guess 
in some ways, do you think this is it? Maybe a, I don't know if Matt Campbell's necessarily in the hot seat, but how important maybe is this season for him? That's kind of the way I'm looking at this. If they have another lackluster season, especially, and, and they continue to trend downwards from that 2020 season, I don't. Maybe do, do things start to get rocky there? Yeah. Well, I think what you must take into account regarding that conversation as a whole is that this is a very long suffering fan base. Iowa state fans are not used to a ton of success on the gridiron. And so what Matt Campbell has already done to improve the overall product at that university is enough to give him a lot more job security than somebody coming off a seven and six season and a four and eight season would traditionally have. But yeah, look, if they miss, if they miss a bowl game once again in 2023, there's certainly a world in which Matt Campbell comes under fire and perhaps even loses his job. I, I, I'm i more of the opinion, though, that from where I stand, and you look at all those close losses last year, I really don't think things were as bad as they looked for Iowa State. And I also think, similar to Oklahoma State, ISU has just become one of those teams that regardless of what – the roster, the depth chart looks like on paper, the stats look like on paper. They're a team that at under, at least under Campbell, we've come to expect that they will exceed what the national expectations for them might be. Now, obviously last year in 2021 didn't necessarily follow that trend. I'm willing to write it off. I'm willing to give Campbell the benefit of the doubt, but this is a really pivotal season because if they fall flat on their face again, I would imagine folks start to get restless, especially when you're mindful of what TJ Otzelberger is doing with the basketball team up there and all the momentum they have. Iowa State fans may begin to look at it as, hey, you know what? We've we've got all this momentum in the sport of basketball. Why can't our football program have the same juice? And is Campbell really the guy to lead us in that pursuit and in that direction? But specific to this matchup against Oklahoma, it's going to be played in Norman. Sooners get them at home. Last time they faced off with Iowa State at home, they won 28 to 21 back on senior day in what ultimately became Lincoln Riley's last home game as head coach at Oklahoma. So uh, that was in the Brock Purdy era. We're now in the Hunter Deckers era, not an apples to apples comparison by any stretch of the imagination. But when they come to town on September 30th, what do you foresee happening? Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's going to be I, I really don't know how different it's going to be from last year's game and last year's game. I mean, oh, you did come away, you know, with a 14 point win, but that game was pretty close. It was pretty competitive for a lot of that game. I expect the same thing, mostly because I expect a similar Iowa State team. I expect an Iowa State team whose identity is defensively. Uh, that is something Matt Campbell has really brought to this program. I think the question for Iowa State, not only this season, but for this matchup is, can they find any offense? I think if if Iowa State had been able to be just even a, a little bit better offensively, I think that game against OU and Ames last season is a little bit different. Now looking to this season, we both expect OU to be uh, better on both sides of the ball. Uh, it's hard to know how much better Iowa State is going to be. OU is going to be at home. But I do think this is going to be one of those games. I mean, this is week five. This is early in the conference schedule. I do think this is going to be a good test to see what OU's offense can do against a good Iowa State defense. I do expect OU to win this game. However, if Iowa State keeps up to that same defensive intensity they had last season and get a little bit better offensively, I think it could be an interesting game. And I think Iowa State could be an interesting player uh, in the conference schedule. But I think for OU, it's going to be – can you can you score enough points against a good Iowa State defense? Yeah. Well, is it a cakewalk? Well, it should be, at least on paper. But as we know, this Iowa State team is resilient, if nothing else, and not typically the type of team that gets blown out. If they lose, and this underscores some of what we were talking about with regard to their 2022 campaign, if they lose, they're at the very least putting up a fight. So I expect the Sooners to come out on top, as you do, Jesse, but I also don't think – that comes without uh, a pretty solid counterpunch at some point in the game from the Cyclones. Uh, One key player for this matchup with Iowa State, just given how these two teams match up in terms of their overall dynamic and identity as a football team. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, again, if we're focusing on Iowa State's defense, I think the key is going to be OU's offense. And Iowa State was really good last season, both defending the pass 
and the run. But I think they were really, really good at defending the run last season. So I think this is going to be, you know, uh, this is going to be a 1A, 1B situation between Javante Barnes and Gavin Sachuk. I think. I think this is going to be a game where, you know, I, I think Iowa State's going to really focus in on taking away Dylan Gabriel in that passing offense. I think it's going to be really important for OU's running game to get going, to chew up clock, you know, control the game. Because that's what Iowa State wants to do. Iowa State wants to control the they yep. control the pace. They want the they want the time of possession battle. They want to win that. I think it's going to be important for OU on the other side of that to do that. I think it's going to be an important running game uh, for OU. I think it's going to be a Javante Barnes, Gavin Sawchuk special. September thirtieth, Matt Campbell and the Iowa State Cyclones head to Norman to take on Brent Venables and the Sooners in what will be the Sooners' home conference opener for the 2023 slate as they prepare to make their last foray through the Big 12 before moving to the SEC for the 2024 season. He is Jesse Crittenden. I am Parker Thune. We'll be back next week with another installment of the OU Insider Quick Slants Season Preview Series. We'll see you then.